right, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. We have another monumental episode in store for you guys. Episode 14, 14. week 14. We made it. It's crazy. Time Love flies. Man. Time flies. So before we start, before we start, um, we have to thank you guys for your support, for your continued support. You know, when we started this podcast, we didn't really have any expectations on how far we wanted to go. Yeah. And we didn't really, we just wanted to reach the people. Yeah, and pretty much. in 14 weeks, we are in the top 25 of iTunes business charts. We are ahead of Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal. Harvard Business Review. It's crazy. Yeah. And we're almost in the top 100 um, for all podcasts. Yeah. So All categories. Now, it's, it's encouraging on a lot of different levels to see that the culture is so engaged in financial literacy. It's not yeah. like we're talking about sports. and We are talking about sports entertainment, but yeah. the financial side of it, right? Yeah. So it's just encouraging to see that. And we're not, um, you know, we don't have any ads. We didn't have any training. We didn't have any publication that wrote about us. We didn't go to school for this. Nah, we just started. We just started it. Yeah. That's it. So... Yes. And also, you know, if you guys can use that as some inspiration, too, if you're thinking about just starting anything, you know, just start. You're going to figure it out as you go, right? Yeah. You're going to figure it out as you go. But also, I wanted to thank the people that you don't see that make this possible. So we have Larry, we have Sid, we have Mike, we have Bam. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, and, you know, like I said, you see me and Troy a lot, but yeah. you, don't, you might not necessarily see the other gentlemen. Yeah. They make sure the visuals are good. They make sure our sound is on point. So, nah, yeah, yeah, thank you thank to them you, for sure. We, we appreciate you for sure. So, we're going to jump right into it today. We have a very special guest. So, today's the education episode. So, we try to do different, you know, topics. Yeah. I thought it was homecoming. Yes, we'll, we'll well, tell you. Yeah, yeah. So, it's education. It's homecoming. Come on, respect. But, <laughs> it, it, it's so... Part of the education, if you go to any school, is homecoming, right? That's like the biggest Ooh. thing. That's like the biggest thing. So That's this, what Beyonce said. This, yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah. This, this, the homecoming edition, as you, as we said before, our Baltimore ties run deep, but this is actually a Greenberg thing. Shout out to the town. Shout out to the town. Shout out to the town. So we all are from Greenberg. We have special guest, Valencia Can we call you Clay. a guest? Let's just call you a member. Family member. Family member. Family member. A family member. founder? <laughs> Valencia Clay. <laughs> I call her Val, so I'll be calling her Val throughout the interview. It's just a habit of mine. But the world, she's the Valencia D. Clay, and she's about to be Dr. Clay. So she really needs no introduction, but I'll just give one anyway. Um, she's a rock star teacher. She has changed the course of education, how teachers teach their classrooms. She's given inspirations to millions of people. And above all that, Rihanna follows her. Yeah. Right? That's like... The, the highest level of compliment. That? Only thing bigger than that is Beyonce. <laughs> so that's that's yeah. Next. I, I, your biggest was like, I mean, Rihanna was crazy. You yeah, like she like, so my, but when Jada followed you, you were like, oh my god. Yeah, Rihanna so was like amazing. Oh my god, I died. <laughs> yeah, Rihanna, Jada, Holly Berry. She was in Vogue. She's been on ABC News, and BET, MSNBC. Yeah, MSNBC. Everybody's covering you. She's working with National Geographic. She's lit all the way around. <laughs> So, we are honored to have her, and as I said, it's a Greenberg thing. She's from Harlem, too, but it's a long story, but <laughs> for, for this one, for this purposes, we're just going to claim Greenberg. So, we're going to jump right into it. We got a lot of information to cover on education, the money plays behind education, how it all talks, because it all comes back to money. Everything in this society comes back to money. So, yeah, we're going we're gonna to jump right into it, and, and let's get it going. Hey, Val. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to touch on the tutoring thing because that's like a billion dollar business. I don't think people mm-hmm. really understand, mm-hmm. especially when we and when we were talking about the college scandal, like parents trying to get their kids into schools. It's a thirteen billion dollar business, but people mm-hmm. are paying for the preparation yeah. for the SAT prep, uh, for the counseling. Now yeah. that's a new well, thing, like so counseling, because like, of the pressure of trying let's to take talk the about test. SATs, right? Just, yeah, just that, like counseling, that's social emotional. So people are making money off the social emotional. Um, warfare that is played on us, right? You know, and and I mean us as everybody because yeah, let's talk about sex, test anxiety, school anxiety. Period. Mm-hmm. I realize that my students, they always do my projects late, unless we do every single piece of it together. Mm. If I give them something to do independently this school year, and I'm not gonna say that I can't fix this because we're gonna keep trying. I got a whole quarter left, but so far this school year. They haven't been able to turn anything in on time. Why? Because it's hard. And that anxiety of feeling like you can't even do it is so real. It's learned helplessness, but it's still real. Mm -hmm. It's still real. And that all comes from post-traumatic slave syndrome, which is Mm. 
which is financial literacy that we don't even learn about. We don't learn about those aspects of what slavery did. We don't learn about the financial aspects of it. We don't learn who we were before Brown versus Board mm -hmm. as as cities. We don't learn these things in school. So it all goes to curriculum. Yeah, when they right? start with court cases, right? that's, that's where we start. But none of our schools are teaching these kinds of curriculums because that's not on the standardized test. Mm. So you give people a standardized test and you say, this is what you need to do in order to say that you are intelligent. So then you get schools looking at that test saying, I need to teach these things X, Y, and Z only right. so that my students will do well on this test so that our school can keep its money. I just read an article in the Post this morning about um, a mother in the Bronx. She can't get her five kids into um, any charter schools in the city. And then that same publication wrote a post that was in favor, in favor of charter schools. So I'm looking at this post. And I'm, I'm realizing they're using their platform right now, in my opinion, yeah. to say, look, we need more charter schools. See how these parents can't get their kids into charter schools? They're not saying, no, we need to figure out how to put public funding, charter funding. Put the They're in the public buildings. Why are they charter schools? Because it's called that. It's still a public school. Yeah. But you're getting different money because somebody else is running it with the same kind of agenda to pass these standardized tests. Right. It, it, the, problem, and the problem with the tests is this. It's like a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. Like, but everybody learns different, mm -hmm. right? So, so can we? So, so yeah, because it's a business show. So we always like to tie it into money and education. Like all things in society, is tied into money, right? So yeah. we take these tests, like you said, the charter schools versus private schools versus public schools, and these are things that the decisions that parents are making mm -hmm. without actually really thinking Knowing. about it. They're just doing it, right? Yeah. But ultimately, it comes down to money. It's money. It's right? a money issue, right? It. it the standardized test is a billion dollar issue. A but billion they, dollar and issue. they are thinking about it. That mother in that article, she said, I don't want to send my kids to the public schools because their test scores are terrible. Those were her words in the article. They are thinking about it. They're thinking about what the oppressor wants them to think about. They're thinking exactly about test scores. They're thinking about the stuff that we, we, we want them to think about um, financial literacy. We want them to think about their history. We want them to think about how to be innovative. How to become an entrepreneur when you grow up in some sort of way. How to become a leader. How to become, you know, something more than somebody tells you you have to do the same thing over and over, a nine to five robot. We are, we want that. But these parents that are saying, let's send them to a private, send them to a charter, they're not realizing that these test scores are showing everything but what we want. Right. These test scores are not preparing. Right. It, it, it's preparing them to pass a test, which in life, right, after you've left, College and those SAT scores. I mean, it's supposed to prepare them to they, they do that. They don't mean but anything. If you look at our baby's test scores, it's still showing that their their reading is at a, an all time low, and that's what I'm saying. That's the sense of urgency we have to have if we're going to talk about business. Then we need to think about how we rally businesses to make sure that kids have more of what they need. And I don't feel like enough businesses are talking about that. Are talking about children and schools and reading. Yeah. Yeah. And writing and math and science. Yeah, this school. It's like I, I read an article from uh, the Brooklyn's Institute, and it was just like schools become a product. It's actual product that they're selling, right? Yeah. So, like when we sell a test to a school district or a state, and they buy it, it's like all right, everybody passed this. Now the educator has to kind of like curtail what they're doing. It's like you know what, I have to have these kids pass, or I'll be viewed as ineffective. Yes. You know what I mean, and. In my That's personal, in my district right, my, and, right now. My, yeah. my data, my school as a whole, our kids did not move. Right. A lot of our teachers have to have... I'm not going to talk about everybody else. I'm talking about myself. Because right. I know people are listening. I don't want to throw... I don't want anybody to feel away. But my data, my data right. was only effective. Not highly effective. Right. Why? Because only a certain amount of my kids grew this year. A certain amount of points. Right. I had, We had a goal. All kids had to move this many points. By the end of this year. And if they didn't, we don't get our money. Right. I don't get a raise next year. Right. I work my ass off this year. And I'm not going to get a raise because their test scores don't show. Right. Their test scores, not the reading, not this. Not these things that I got in this notebook. That they, No, not right. this. Not these scores. Nothing that you their know. standardized test score shows that they didn't grow. Right. So therefore, I am... Ineffective. I'm not, I'm not highly effective. Nope, yeah. I'm not. Like, that's that's the money play behind it. Because you're, you're, you're not understanding. Curriculum dictates... What our children learn, who mm -hmm. they become, it dictates what who we are, what we're doing, and this is not a we as in just teachers. This is the world because education is the world. How else are you gonna? How else could you get here? And you 
I, all three of us at this table have totally different, we went to the same schools, granted, <laughs> but then we have totally different educational narratives. Yeah. But then also... But we I, still ended up in the same place. So for me, my personal perspective on education is, okay, I'm an outsider because you guys work in school. You are you don't like this, te- this term teacher. You're an educator, right? I'm right. a teacher. I like them both. Okay, so you're both educators. I, I think the term is when he says, you're a school teacher. I like school teachers. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, so, all right. It's you're, country. You're both, you're both educators and, and I'm in business, right? Right. I mean, you're both in business as well on a certain level, but... So the thing about it is I feel like my outside experiences had have helped me more and even in sports have helped me more. So I don't feel like I, I don't think that what you learn in school is going to be the key to your success. Yeah, because I mean, learning doesn't stop in the classroom. It doesn't stop in the classroom. and You learn way more outside of the classroom than you'll ever learn inside of a classroom. Because life is a teacher. 24 hours a day. You know what I mean? So like that's important. Like Life is going to be your teacher. So like when I see uh, Valencia post things, I'm like, I can see the passion in her. I know some of those things are not in in the curriculum of but, Maryland. So my thing is, why is that okay with you? No, no, it's not okay. okay. It's not okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, not- that, what you're saying is true, that we're not learning what we need in schools. So you, with your platform, has to keep doing this. So that you oh, can, that way we can't sit yeah, here and be yeah. like, yeah, we're not learning nothing in school. No, we have to knock the doors down and change that so that the babies yeah. are learning something in school. Because let me tell you what it looks like when they're wasting their time. It looks like then when I come in to try to give them as much as I can, they don't want it because they're so used to wasting their time. That's what they think they should be doing. That's all they want to do. That's what they're desiring right. now. Yeah. Not everybody. But this is what's happening to too many. Yeah. Too and many. It's tough because it's like you're one grade, right? So by the time they've gotten to you, they've had years of people who probably have not reached them in 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 a sense. It's like um, you only can be what you see, right? So like when they see somebody like you, it's like wow. I can imagine the eighth not grade kid that, who has you. Yeah, that yes, yeah. but also you don't understand what it looks like when you have hardworking teachers, well-meaning. That's yeah. why I love Carter G. Woodson, Chapter Three, The Miseducation of the Negro. He talks about the well-meaning missionaries that went down south when we were. Well, when our ancestors were finally given the right to learn mm-hmm. how to read and write, these well-meaning missionaries went down and they, or they opened the freedmen schools. Mm-hmm. But they taught them what they taught them was not true history. True, they they taught them a whitewashed education. Mm-hmm. This is the same thing that's happening right now in our schools. You have these well-meaning educators, no matter what color, ethnic background, doesn't matter. We are all well-meaning, doing what we are told. Not all. You're right. <laughs> Let's be careful. But as a whole, yeah, thank you. Yeah. That's why I'm... Yeah. As a whole, it looks like this. Yeah. It looks like this on purpose, though. It looks like this on purpose. Yeah. And it's scary because if we don't continue to have these conversations in a way that has a solution for the children... Yeah. It's going to stay the same. The and the money plays, these financial podcasts won't mean a thing because if the babies are not learning, they're going to keep growing up. You're going to keep having the same podcast. We got to make sure that this is a seed, but not the end all be all. Because the goal is for us to not need, the goal is for it to be a norm. Right. That financial literacy being your healthiest money self. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, you said that. you understanding it from a healthy perspective. If you can understand money from, in the same way we understand food in a nutrition way, mm-hmm. nutritious way, if we if we understood our money and our bank accounts and our, our finances, if we understood the difference between saving, Spend. right? If we understood the, de- the difference between spending mm-hmm. and investing and the difference just between those two words, if we teach the babies that and it's normal in their minds, that's that is where we have to go. Well, well, it's interesting that you said the nutrition thing because we don't understand nutrition. No, right? like we even do. going back some to of s- us, not all, no. majority. <laughs> so, gotta... Going back in, to school, right? Like with the pizza and milk. Oh, you talking about the lunch? Yeah, oh, school yeah, lunch yeah, yeah, yeah. School, and, and it's like this is terrible, right? Yeah. And I was fortunate enough to never eat school lunch. Like my mom packed me lunch every day. That was very rare. <laughs> No, it's I, know, I remember but that. <laughs> it's like looking back on it now, that yeah. was such a blessing that Absolutely. she even took the time. Because she knew. Because it's like everybody else was eating pizza. And and so what if we had the tops. moms like your mom, who, you know his mom was a oh, teacher. Oh, yeah, we so love his mom. We love his mom. mom. What if we had more moms going into the community saying, we can't let them feed our babies this? Like we just, there's so much that we have accepted 
that we didn't know that we were accepting or that we didn't know that there were more options for because there's so many other priorities that we have. It's like we can't... We, yeah, you think about lunch. We just happy right. we got school lunch. Right, yeah. We're you not know, thinking like, yo, the kids home, like, they ate tater tots again. Yeah, okay. we don't realize that they're feeding us Yeah, trash. but then, once again, going back to the money, right? So these schools have contracts yep. mm-hmm. with food speak vendors, it, right? right? Yeah. With dairy companies. With So it's not it's like they, on purpose. they're not just getting this food out the sky. Oh, no, no, they're no, not no. getting that food out the they're sky. Getting, on it's purpose. a million, million, billion yeah. dollar contract. If we talk about real estate, if we talk about banking, if we talk about school, it all comes back to money, man. Everything. Right. That, and that's the, that's the beauty of the podcast because it's so broad ranging. Now, we yeah. can talk about so many different things, but education is, you know, like you said, that that's like the ground root of a kid's beginning, right? Yeah. They go to preschool, they go to kindergarten, they go to, you go to school and school is, is a business. Yeah. Right? It's a business. Yeah. Absolutely. Even college. College is a, a billion college dollar a, business. Yeah, we know that. We covered that. So, so all right. So, we talked about some problems, but we not, this podcast is not a grace, a cloud, or, right. you know, we, we're not going to just leave you um, in gloom. We're going to now talk about some solutions and how we can hopefully change the world. That's what we had to do. All right. So once again, we, we're not going to leave you guys, you know, feeling like there's no hope because there's always hope. Yeah. There's always hope. And that's why we started this podcast is to inspire people, right? And to give inspiration. That's the most valuable thing. That's the most important thing that you can ever give to highest form inspiration. Of human act. So, all right. Now, we talked about what's wrong in the education system, but I know one of your goals, Val, is to one day be the Secretary of Education. When did I say that? No, I wrote that down. You, you told me that. that. Yeah, you told me I that. Was, I have the text. I was like, wow. Like, that's super ambitious. Like, let's do it. So, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. When did I say this? No, nah, the pressure's on. You got to do it. So, all right. So, you, so, you, <laughs> so that's one of your goals. And sure, like I said, you're, you're an educator right. as well. You both are educated. So, we know that money is... It's a lot of times people say, you know what? The average, this is the average person. I'm just going to keep it real. Yeah. I can't fix it. So, why even worry about it, right? Like, this thing has been going on for so long. The school systems have failed. The kids in poor neighborhoods are not going to get the same education as kids in, in, that go to private schools or mm-hmm. live in rich neighborhoods. It's never going to be equal. It's like almost like the marching syndrome. Like, why are we going to keep trying to march? What? And this is why the entrepreneur thing comes into play with people like myself. Not to say, like, when we tied it in, we said, why do you think that's okay? I don't think it's okay, but I feel like I'm, I'm not expecting anybody to do something for me that they haven't done for 400 years. Like, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. now let's do our own thing. Mm-hmm. We can start teaching ourselves. We can have different platforms. This is what this platform is. It's like a, a college course pretty much every single week, right? Mm-hmm. So if you can do something in school, great. Mm-hmm. I'm not holding my breath. That's my personal thing. And there's a lot of people that feel like me. So I want to get you guys' um, thoughts on it, on how you think, oh, why it's important to change it from the inside, because you are inside. You're inside yeah. the building, literally. And, um, you know, just your thoughts on on, on that. Um, I'll start. Um, I just think representation, number one, is, is extremely important. Like, I work in elementary school. I don't know if I've ever... I don't know how many black males or males of color are in elementary school. So having representation, seeing something that you can aspire to be. I, I always say that everything I do is super intentional, from the way I, I talk, to the way I dress, um, to the music I listen to. I want to stay in tune with what the future generation is listening to so that we can always be engaged. Um, I also think being culturally responsive is key. And I think that's one of the things that Val does through her post. Her education is so responsive. And people used to say we need to be relevant. And I'm like, relevancy can change over time. You know what I'm saying? Every 10 years, culture changes, right? If I, I'm from Jamaican descent, right? If I went back to Jamaica, the culture is completely different from the one that my parents grew up in, right? So that we have to be responsive because culture is always changing. Things are always changing. We need to keep up with that. Like that's a job in itself. And I don't think a lot of my, you know, educators take that job as seriously as they should, right? They get their curriculum. They say, this is what I have to teach. If they don't learn it, you know what, that's on them. But in the end, it'll end up being on the educator themselves, right? Because the test scores will dictate how effective the teacher is. So I think representation and being responsive to what's happening in culture. Everybody doesn't have the same values at this point. So we need to start there. We need to start first with identifying the values in the community. We have to come together as a full community first. Right now, everybody's working in silos. People need to come together as one community. Community means whatever, whoever you are, no matter what you work, what you look like. You live in that community? That's your community? Cool. Everybody come together. Everybody. 
then we identify the values. And for me, my number one value is education. Somebody else's number one value might be something else. We don't know right now. But once we tally up the values, then we work from making a plan. Right now, we can't say what, what works, how are we going to fix it. We got to implement a plan. That's what action research is. That's why I'm going back to school. That's why I got to get my doctorate. So what plan? Or what, would your, what would your plan specifically? What would your plan look like? Yeah, you're, you're going back to uh, John Hopkins, right? Uh, so you're going to be, what are you going to be studying there? Mind, brain, and teaching. So I'm looking at things from a neurologist's perspective, okay. which is very scary for me because I am not good at science and math right now. Mm -hmm. I'm getting better, but that's not my strong suit. So being a researcher has always terrified the heck out of me. Mm -hmm. But I don't care. I have to get over that, um, which is another reason why I'm like, I, I cannot be on social media right now. I can't create right now. I have to study and become a better learner. Right now, my learning habits are just really trash. Yeah. Like, I feel like I have ADHD. I know I'm going on a tangent, but I do. Yeah. Sometimes I just can't even focus. Like, look at my book. I had to make myself a little daily monitor for yeah. my own behaviors because I feel like I'm, like, connected to everything else. Then, it, you know, anyway, back to this. What we need to do. <laughs> we need to do what I'm doing and self-assess mm -hmm. because it starts with you. But the other thing we need to do, which which is why I'm going back to school, is we have to go into our classrooms with a researcher's lens. So what I want to look at is specifically the child who has been neglected. Mm -hmm. And I want to see how the habits of the neglected child play out um, in their educational abilities. Um, and that's all I know right now. From the start. From that's just my little like, this is what I want. I want to look at anger and I want to look at love from the teacher's perspective. So I want to look at this, a love-based education. Yeah. What does that look like? How, how do you gather data? to assess the effectiveness of a love-based education. I don't know these things yet, right? right? So I can't say this is the solution, love is the solution, until I do my research, yeah. until I gather the data, until I do it again with a bigger pool, until I, I have to keep going, I have to, yeah. I have to test this out. So right now I'm a student. I'm a student right now and I feel like that is one of the solutions I would give y'all or the us, so the community is become a student. And be okay with being a learner at whatever place you are in right now. Because no matter how many accolades you have, titles or followers or friends or whatever the fuck you got. I don't know. Excuse my language. But it doesn't matter if you don't know how to get where you want to go next or how to get to the place that needs you next. And I feel like we're not... The, the Instagram pages right now, no disrespect, no shade. Everybody is doing their work in their way. But I don't see enough of us... Mm -hmm. I don't see myself personally yeah. doing enough work that says teach reading, period. Yeah. And I don't mean physically reading. Rashad is my number one example when I tell people about non-readers. Rashad <laughs> knows everything. Like, if Rashad doesn't read, Rashad <laughs> reads non-print. Right. Non-print. Yeah. That is the type of reader that our kids are. We need to yeah. see more teachers like you. And there are more teachers well, like you in the world than us. Uh, we is, need the teachers need you. Nah, that's a fact. They do need me, first and foremost. Not you. <laughs> the type of you. Can, oh, I, can I just touch Lord. on something really quickly? Can I just start really quickly? Because what you said is very interesting. Like if you ask me throughout high school and even in college and post post uh, school how many books I've read, I probably could count on my hands. Yeah. And I was, no, I don't read enough. And then I started I read an article and I was like, wait, I, I do read a lot. I read I read the Wall Street Journal every day. I read the Daily News when my dad would bring home every day. I was reading print. I just wasn't reading books, but I was reading the magazines. When I was younger, I read cards. Like I always read, just not in the way that we were taught, like, hey, you're not reading this literature book, so you're not a reader. Because you were taught to read for a grade, not right, for, for a grade, Right, I'm doing it for my it's own enjoyment. Difference. And I've always done it. That's good that you said that. And they didn't, no one taught us to read. No one taught us how to love learning they didn't yeah. explicitly say this is what learning feels like don't yeah. you feel good yeah. no one gave us those and i think i can't say no one because we did have good teachers yeah. but i never got someone to say this feels good doesn't it girl yeah. Yeah. no one said that when i was learning yeah. i was just when like we, i'm going if somebody would have helped me name that high the natural high yeah. that comes from learning shh yeah. How many more people would be getting high off learning every day? Well, I also, I think that, you know, from the education standpoint, see, one of my problems with education is that and, and I'm not anti-education. I'm not anti-school. But I just feel like I don't have faith in school because 
I've seen it fail too many times, right? And one of the one of the main issues that I have with school is that everybody learns differently. I think I read somewhere where it's, where it's like mm-hmm. there's seven different learning styles, right? But mm-hmm. school only teaches one way to learn. It's an industrial style. So now you have 30 kids that's all learning the same way. So like you said, I don't read books. I'm an audio learner. So mm-hmm. I can hear something yeah. and I can process it much faster than if I read it. I know how to read, but... Yep. My my yes. attention span is yes. very short, right? Exactly. So I like to do audio books. Yeah. So it's just, I'm, it's not, it doesn't discount my learning. Exactly. Like, you know exactly. Like, but yeah. back in the day, we were taught that it, though. That's right? what, exactly. and even, <laughs> why am I saying back in the day? Right now, yeah. our teachers have not been given the freedom to say, you know, your babies don't want to read that boring book. What else do you think they should do in order to get what you want? Yeah. You know, I know they yeah. come in my room all the time. What lesson plan are you on in the lesson plan book? I'm yeah. like 17, I don't know. Yeah. And, but I have the data. I'm sorry for hitting the table. <laughs> I have the data. I have the data that shows these are the essay. Like, look at, look, I just gotta keep going back. I mean, when we, when we visited your yeah, classroom, you saw. Yeah, we saw. Yeah. I was like, but, this is the type of literature that our kids need. But like, this, but not this, even the literature. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the data, the essays that say this is their first essay, this is their second, this is their third, and you see these grades going up. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to stay on a lesson plan that's not teaching them how to get from A to B. Mm-hmm. And but the, and this is the, then this is the problem with education. Even when we I we just posted on Instagram where a lot of people were saying it's college worth it, right? Because right. they go to college, they get these degrees, and they have a bunch of student loan debt, and they can't get a job because they're not they don't. They're going without really knowing what they want to do. Right. They're getting a, a general degree in something, yeah. and it's not specialized. And they're just going out in the world, and it's like, what do I do now? Because they, they don't teach you, this is life skills. This is how you survive <laughs> right. in the real world, right? Yeah. And I said this before, where I feel like school kind of prepares you for that nine-to-five mentality, right? Because mm-hmm. you have a lunch break. You get to school early. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not an early riser. Yeah, like, I don't get up till yeah. 8 o'clock, not, sometimes yeah. 9 o'clock, right? Yeah. I work better at night. I might stay up to four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So I don't feel like I have to get up at six thirty in order to feel good about myself. Like yeah. you know, it, everybody's different. But I think that that's because I was never really that great of, as a student, yeah. decent student, but I was never really great, right? Yeah. And I think on that, terms of what was defined as greatness, because well, great is relative. Well, that's what I'm saying. In, in school, I was never a great student. In that's school. relative, though. That is as based far as on... grades, grades and stuff okay. like that. In Cause, test school, because I don't want you to. A lot of times, our babies. People come, we have, all of us have these stories. Like me personally, I would tell my story of how terrible I was in high school. I was this, I was that. But the reality was I really wasn't that bad. I just thought I was that bad. There were so many other yeah. things. Well, and there are the kids, there are kids who are not bad at all, who who don't get to interact with our blanket statement of being not great. And Well, yeah, so, so that's why even, so I'm going to go, because I always like to tie in personal stories. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's crazy now because like on Instagram, People will hit me all the time and it's flattering. I appreciate it. But they're like, yo, you're so smart. You're a genius. Da, 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 da. But it's crazy because, A, nobody looks at themselves like that, right? right. We're just reading information and we're just giving it back to the public. Yeah. But so in school, I had an IEP, mm-hmm. right? If things are not familiar with IEP, that's like a learning disability. No, it's an individual education plan. Yeah. So pretty much they said I had a learning disability. But it's not, I, didn't, I don't think I had a learning disability. I just wasn't interested in learning the way that I was being taught. Obviously... I'm intelligent, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, but it's how many kids take that label yeah. and now their self esteem drops. And now going forward, they don't feel good about themselves. But they- it's not the label. Because me, I feel like give them a label if you're going to educate them on what that label is and not make it seem like that label it's a stigma. is. If they forever. feel like it's a stigma, yeah. that's, that's stigma. You know what? Like, let's, because I, I'm speaking for myself personally. When I got diagnosed, that freed the heck out of me. It made me feel like I am, this is, I'm normal. There are things to help me with how I feel right now. And this is, because prior to that, it was scary for me to not be like everybody else. Mm. Once I understood, and then I could, and then once I educated myself on my label, on my label, I could say, this is not actually my label. I was showing signs of this, but I'm a little bit different than this and that. Because I was able to educate it, myself with it. Now with our babies, you have children who don't even know what it mean, what it means to be, ADHD, but their IEP says they have ADHD. Mm-hmm. I have a little boy. I asked him, he said, no, he said, um, Miss Clay, am I bad? And I said, no, you're not bad. I said, um, I, we, we were talking about his thing and I said, you just have ADHD. He said, why would you say that? Like he got really angry. Yeah. And I'm like, so you would rather be labeled bad than to have ADHD? He was like, yes. Mm. Like that's, that's not okay. But what is? But are we even sure that 
these labels and ADHD are even appropriate, right? Because we not, and but the point is to still be able to. He doesn't even know what that means. He doesn't know that it simply means that sitting still and learning is not the way for him. Right. He doesn't know that it means he should be outdoors, canoeing and putting up tents and learning project based learning. Project based. He learning. doesn't yep. know these things about himself because he doesn't even know what his label means. Yeah. ADHD don't mean dumb. It means I can't sit. The, this is me. I yeah. can. I knew much. I needed my yeah. book. Because I get overstimulated. So I can't listen to you for a long period of time without moving. And I don't want to sit here and start fidgeting. So I have to start writing. That's how my learning style is. How many children don't know that about themselves? Right. They get in trouble because they can't sit still like this for the whole time. Like it's, it's no. It's, it's, it's like the industrialized way of teaching or building schools, right? In the Industrial Revolution, it was like, hey, everybody shows up at this time. We go into this building. A bell rings. We go to this room. Another bell rings. We have lunch. Another bell rings. We go home. Yeah. It's the same thing that they've created with schools. It's like, all right, we go in. First period, there's a bell. Second period, there's a bell. Third period, there's lunch. It's the same format. Everybody's supposed to learn the same when everybody doesn't. Everybody learns differently. And like when kids feel comfortable, like knowing that it's okay. Like I've seen schools that have thrived with project-based learning because it's a different way to teach. And the teachers, educators love it because it's like, wow, I'm learning too as we're doing this. This is amazing. But you know, it's, it, we have to get away from that industrialized yeah. way of, of teaching. Yeah. And I think teachers need the permission and schools need the funding to get training. Training on how to differentiate in your classroom. Yeah. Because get don't don't get it twisted. We're saying people are not doing, but people are doing it really well. Yeah, there's a lot of people. And there doing are great so work. many studies. Like differentiation in the classroom should be happening every single day. You should be creating lesson plans, develop developing these lesson plans directly for your kids, tailored directly for your kids. All of those kids. Like, this is data right now. These are my kids that got a, f a failing grade on my essay. These are the kids that moved up. These have a BOD. Now, when I go in on Tuesday, I'm not going to give them all the same exact lesson. They get they failed, so they need something else. They are moving on. They're gonna, And then the kids right here that are moving on in the purple, they don't learn the way the ones in the red do. So I have to make sure, even though they're all moving on, this group has something different. This group has something different yeah. while I'm over here specifically with this little group. How many teachers are doing that? A lot. A lot, but the thing is, the thing is, not enough are. Well, because, yeah, I was going to say, I, I've actually never seen a teacher do that, right? <laughs> yeah. um, just being honest. Yeah, and, and, right. and, and I went to school, public school and private school, and most, especially in public school, most of the teachers were just getting trying to get through the day. See? And if you didn't curse them out, you got to be. Wow. <laughs> Realistically. That's real. Like, no, that's yeah. happening today. Yeah. I can tell you that happens. I can tell you that happens. I promise you, I can tell you that happens. And I'm not... Even going to talk about the negative. I'm going to yeah. stay in this zone right here. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot of people doing great work. I want. I want. What I want to say is that I want any business person that's listening to this. If you got some bread, you go to your local school and you say, "Hello, principal. I'm giving you this donation to um, pay for a differentiation PD." And what is that? A professional development for your teachers right. on differentiation. And if they need somebody to run that PD, Google it or come find us. Me, my my peers, yeah. my principal. I have. Um, People in D.C., Expeditionary Learning, um, but Baltimore Design School has, like, we have a lot of people out here. Um, Gina Proctor, one of my favorites. Like, we have some good teachers out here who can help you learn how to attend to every child in your classroom. The problem is not that teachers don't want it. Sometimes the problem is that that curriculum has a shame. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, and so it, that, goes, it goes back to the test. It goes back to the money. It yeah. goes back to the test. Like, everybody is studying us but us. Yeah. And creating more to keep us in this box that we are in. Because yeah. the third, we really can get out of third it. grade is a critical year. It's actually the first year that they actually start taking state tests. And exactly. even in New York, a lot of people they have the uh, option to opt out of the test. Because really, third the, the anxiety is a real thing now. And I'm not sure what it really proves in, in third grade. Eighth grade is another critical year, but the tests show like if a kid has a low reading score at third, chances are they're going to follow him to eighth. And it if he does. has it at eighth, they're going to follow him but to tenth. Why? Because, and then because those because they know that that kid is likely to drop out of school because yes, now he has yes. a low literacy rate. And teachers don't know. Teachers have said to me, I don't know how to teach kids that are below grade level. I've only been trained to teach my grade level. <laughs> so you mean to tell me you are a sixth grade teacher and you have kids that are reading on third, fourth, fifth grade levels and you don't know how to bring them up. What happens when that kid gets to eight, gets to 10? Right. They're lower. It's, it's now it's your job. It is, but a lot of teachers don't see it as that because they yeah. don't even know how to do it. Yeah. We need to make sure that this money... There's so much money. Give your schools money to get the teachers training. Don't just buy us books. Teach us how to teach those books because a lot of teachers need help learning how to right. teach. Yeah. 
And that's just the name of the game. Like, I should be using iPads mm -hmm. instead of these. My baby should all have iPads in their hands, but I'm not efficient enough on an iPad yet. So I'm doing this and they doing this. Everybody has a notebook just like mine. And we're working. In that, but they feel good carrying their little little notebook pad. But when do I get that iPad training? Right. When do I, when does every school say it is a requirement that every kid has an iPad instead of having a pen or a pencil? Yeah. Because at this point, teach them how to use their iPhones instead of making them lock them in their lockers. Yeah. We teach have, them how to Google. We like, have we what? have actually some school districts here in Westchester where they've allowed that that has been implemented where in starting kindergarten. Where kid, are we? Where yeah. is it? Well, Westchester. Where? County. Say it again. <laughs> the, Where? The, the, the county that we're from. Westchester. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm just saying that because it's an initiative, but it starts there. But so then, Westchester's job is to make sure that they publicize that yeah. nationwide, so people can see this is working in this district really well. Everybody else needs to start doing it. They need to use their power. Use that power. This is now we, we could get on the conversation of like, um, you know, black power versus white influence and all these different. We could talk about, you know, allies versus co-conspirators. Mm -hmm. I need Westchester to be a co-conspirator in this moment. Mm -hmm. And I need them to say this works with our children, specifically our children who are black and brown in this district. This works. Right. If they take that data and they show it, my principal reads everything. This is where she gets her brain skills, ideas from. She gets these brand spanking ideas every now and then and they come from an article she references that she's reading. Right. If she reads that and sees that it works, guess what we get the permission to do? We yeah. get the permission to try it. Try I should have been new about this. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's my thing. It's like we're doing a lot of great work but we're still in a silo. Community needs to come together. True. And decide what are our values and then make a bucket for every value. These are the tools that work to get us toward that value. Because some people are really doing the work for those values. Yeah. We don't know. Though. We don't know. That should be on the shade room. <laughs> I want to see that on the shade room. Like, yeah. I want to see, I love seeing myself on places that I would have never guessed. Like, Vogue, crazy. Yeah. I would never guess. Child but I want to see the literacy deficit in those same spaces. I want to see more urgency around teaching people how to love learning, their own individual paths of learning. Don't you love what you're doing right now? You love this, and you're learning as you go. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's you're what, loving this learning absolutely. process. That, that, this is what it yeah, feels. Yeah, that's like. one of the best things about being a teacher is that it helps you learn. Yeah, right. So, like, even when we post on Instagram, like, I gotta research the stories because I gotta make sure you right. know it's factual exactly. and that the information is you correct. You are a highly qualified, right? He sounds like what a highly effective teacher does. They yeah. research. They're continuing to look for more to gauge their children, their students, their audience. So, I I don't know, you know, what it is that we together can continue to do to make sure that this is happening because now I feel like it's our our duty since we've said this to make sure that we check in. But maybe that's what we can do. We can plan to have like some sort of monthly community check-in yeah. um, maybe here or in different cities. I don't know. Something we can think about. An initiative where we're just hearing or even just in your live. Like you guys, I want you to continue this part of the conversation where you're really calling people to, to say this is what we're doing in my community to keep this conversation being stake wide, holders wide, yeah. stakeholders wide. You know what I'm trying to say. Everybody at the table. Yeah, everybody's a stakeholder in it, right? Because, I mean, if you, you've come through education and if you have kids, they're going to go through it too. Yeah. So everybody holds a stake in this. Yes. Wow. That was powerful. That was powerful. Um, yeah, man. It, that was just very eye-opening for a lot of different levels because, you know, we go through the educations. Everybody, that's one thing about education. Everybody goes through it. Everybody has to do it. There's no, there's no opting out. Even yeah. if you're homeschooled, you're still taught something. Like, but you, know. you can opt out of the state test. Yeah. And not enough of us know that either. Yeah. And it won't hurt you. If you, if parents opt a child out of a test, a standardized test, it doesn't hurt them, their future. And you, what would be the benefit of opting out of a state test? You don't have to take it. Yeah. Because like I said, like, we haven't figured out the purpose of it, right? It says that it, it's supposed to, center us, it's supposed to have kids focus in more. They're supposed to work harder to try to, for achievement. And it doesn't show that. Like, so no, any state that you're in, you can opt out? Well, I know New York State, you can. Well, Maryland, it's a every, law. You can. Federal? Like, Was it Regents? Can, That's the Regents in New Any York? state? No, no, no. No, no, no. Regents is high school. But we're talking about, I'm talking about Park specifically. Yeah. Like, you can opt out of standardized tests like that. Yeah. But the Regents is, is another thing. I'm glad you said that. Cause but the even, Regents is New York. That's just a New York. But some other states have Regents exams. But like if I pass my if I pass a Regents exam, right, and I have a Regents diploma, that's only good if I'm in New York. If I go to Connecticut, it means nothing. Or if I go to New Jersey, that New York Regents means nothing. So why are we mandating that our kids in New York have a Regents diploma if they want to go to school somewhere else? It means zero. 
You know what I mean? Like if I'm in California and I pass Sometimes California, they have to we pay the, the money. I, I, well, it comes back to it again, right? It's so just we, like why do you have to pay money to take the teacher certification test? Right, and that and, and every time you take it and you fail, you got to keep paying. <laughs> and now that you can take it more times, it used to be like four times a year. Now it's like every three weeks you can take it because right? yeah. it's more money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Keep making it harder so they can't. They can't pass pay, it. So they can't pass it. And you Put know more what? restrictions in so that they. People that look like you and I will it'll deter us away from it. You know what I mean? That's why I said representation is key. We need to see more educators of color in all school districts. You know what? I feel like we're saying a lot without allowing people to understand where we're getting this information from. Well, this is the thing about this show, too, because we don't just, me and Troy just don't give our opinions on things. We, yeah. bring, we bring experts in the field in that are knowledgeable. So Troy's an expert in this because he's a teacher. But that's why we brought you in to talk about education. This is an education. Well, no, I just wanted to go back to the text. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, no I'm just saying. So, but um, but yeah, so, but that brings me into what I was saying as far as, you know, we talk about taxes. This isn't just, we're just making this up. Right. We're bringing in an accountant. Yeah. We had, you know, a lawyer and we're not just going off yeah. the cuff. No, she knows. And this is important too, to highlight different people in our community that may not be highlighted. And, you know, yeah. we have professionals that are highly educated, highly trained, very efficient people that yeah. come from our community, right? And right. they need to be highlighted. So that's one of the, the platforms, one of the things that we're using our platform to as well. And that hopefully that might inspire somebody, right? Yeah. So oh, she's a cool lawyer. She's a cool teacher. She, you know, oh, he, he talks like me, but he's a mortgage broker. I can right. do that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. it's not that, it can't be that difficult. So, yeah, so, oh man, we can stay on this topic. We can stay on this education for so long because there's so much to talk about, but we want to just... First and foremost, um, thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. Um, it's very valuable. I hope you guys really, you know, thought about a lot of things that were said. Because as I said, everybody comes through one education one way or another. So it's important for yourself, for your children, for your grandchildren, for all of our community. As you yeah. said, you know, it's a community effort. Whether you're in school, out of school, whatever, everybody, you know, needs to be aware of our education system. Everybody needs to self-educate and everybody needs to hold our institutions with accountable as well right and do what you can do too so about one thing about complaining that's how i got into financial literacy right because i used to complain a lot and then when you gave me an opportunity to teach a class yeah. i started teaching and then from teaching i developed kind of a passion for it yeah. so everybody can bring value one way or the other whether it's yeah. an after school program whether it's communities it doesn't have to be in a set school your religious organization, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, teach whatever you do for a living. You might, you know, you might be an accountant, teach the kids about how to do taxes. Or go back, go back to your school. So if, you, if you're in your neighborhood, that's one of the things that, you know, the first thing I had you do was like, we had a career day. I'm like, oh, come back and speak to these kids because they, you are from our neighborhood. Come back and speak. If Whatever profession you're in, go back and find out what your school's doing, if they offer a career day or if they don't. Start one and go back and, and talk to kids, man, because it's valuable. No, it's important. It's important. Val, do you have any initiatives or things coming up that you want to make the people aware of? Or can they support your, I know you have a um, nonprofit organization. Do you have any? People can be aware of me being um, in a purposeful silence. I'm on sabbatical from all speeches. This is like my last public speaking thing. <clears throat> Oh, I am going to be at the Dominican Writers. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm that's like, wait, did you just tell me that? <clears throat> that's the panel, but that's it. After that, um, we're taking the Blossom Girls to Cuba this year. So you'll see some stuff coming out to donate to that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and before we go, once again, we want to thank you, God, but we want to make you aware of something also. Troy, you want to talk about Patreon? Uh, yeah, Patreon. I want to just give uh, a quick second to shout out our two newest members of Patreon. Cody, he, he uh, actually joined at our Legacy Tier. Shout out to Cody. Shout yeah, out to Cody. Yeah, so Cody, he, good man, uh, good man. our Legacy Tier involves us having a three hour, three one hour conversations a month. Um, so Cody is, we're going to be starting that this week. And I want to shout out Terry, who joined in at the Blueprint Tier. So uh, Terry's going to get a half an hour live stream with us to talk about the episode that, you know, we, we debuted that week. So shout out to those two and everybody who's been joining on Patreon. We had, we had some people who said, you know what, I felt like y'all were giving so much away for free. I, I just had to donate something. So that Proud to Pay campaign yeah, continues. Yeah, Proud to Pay. Like I said, we're going to the marathon continues, um, you know, and as we said before, you know, Nipsey, he was our guy. And that's one of the things that he, he really championed, the Proud to Pay campaign. We're going to give you the information for free. But, you know, if you want to financially support the podcast and, you know, allow, like what Val just said, you know, go to different cities and we just want to keep spreading the good word of financial literacy. So that helps because, you know, every, everything in this world, you know, takes money to fund it. So 
we we are thankful for the people that have come aboard as patrons and we, we look forward to other people and um continue to give us your feedback. We also have merch. Yeah. The merch is up, the merch shop is doing well. Um and once again, we make statements with our clothes and, and our culture and we complain about designers that yeah. we know don't care about us, right? So all of the clothes have financial literacy um kind of woven in. We have um hustle for your last name, assets over liabilities, a lot of different stuff. So you know, it's important to to, to make statements on, yeah. on what you're doing. When you, when very you're intentional. Out. Everything we're doing is very intentional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my book tip of the week is soundless cries don't lead to healing. And who is the author of this book? None other than our guest, Valencia D. Clay. <laughs> what, is that? what is that? What is that? Yes. <laughs> Cop the book. Also, cop the mixtape. Mixtape is coming. Mixtape is mixtape coming. coming. It's not a mixtape like you think it is. Yeah. It, just, just don't, just buy it. Yeah. If she says to do it, whatever she says to do, just do it. <laughs> That's right. Especially if you're in education, um, we talk about being responsive, and, and that is really a guide. I remember when you were coming up with the ideas for the book, you were just reaching out, and I'm like, oh, this is dope. I love this. So, like, for, when I heard you did, I'm like, you know what? Give me five copies. I just want five. We'll, we'll take it. So, yeah. if you're in education, definitely look into it and try to implement some of the ideas in it. It's, it's very responsive to. Oh, you to bought ten copies. I bought ten. Mm-hmm. Y'all need to buy 20 then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like Jay-Z when he brought 100 uh, mixtapes from Nipsey Hussle. Support the fan. He brought 10, just because. Consume it. There you go. Copy. Thank you guys for rocking with us. Um, we will see you next week. Peace. Peace.